The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Welcome to the Quick Heal webinar on how to keep your kids safe online. We have a small announcement to make at the beginning of this webinar. Mr. Amit Tyagi, who is head of uh, Quick Heal Marketing, uh, he could not attend this webinar because of a business emergency. But we have Soumya Patnaya, who would be presenting today's webinar. Let me introduce Soumya to you. She holds a Master's in Communication Studies and she heads the content marketing team of Quick Hill Technologies. She has several years of experience in the cyber safety domain. She has conducted numerous workshops on cyber safety for school and college students, teachers and parents. She has also counseled parents and teachers on cyber safety. She trains and guides the in-house team on conducting cyber safety workshops across the country as a part of Quick Heal Cyber Safety Initiative, she has created the Quick Heal Online Safety Guidebook for Children. She also contributes cyber safety related articles to the Quick Heal blog. Another small announcement to make. All the attendees of today's webinar would be getting a complimentary copy of Quick Heal Total Security for Android as a gift from Quick Heal. And we would be sharing a link to the recording of this webinar so you can use it for all your future references. I wish today's webinar would be uh, a learning experience for all of us. Now handing over this the uh, presentation to Soumya.
Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar hosted by Kriti, How to Keep Your Kids Safe Online. Now, uh, children are being raised with the internet as a normal and everyday part of their lives. Not uh, surprisingly, many of us are still trying to understand the impact of this, this medium has on our children and families. We know it's up to us to make sure our children use the internet safely and wisely. Yet, a lot of us aren't quite sure how to do that, especially since our children tend to know more about the internet than we do. Which brings me to the goals of this webinar. First, we will discuss what kids are doing online. Knowing what draws kids to the internet is the first step toward understanding its impact. Second, we will show you some things you can do as a parent to help keep your kids safe online. And finally, we will talk about the importance of teaching your kid to use the internet wisely, for that is an important life skill. Now, you may be tempted to get your, keep your kid away from the internet for as long as possible, but the internet is uh, so uh, closely linked to our lives uh, nowadays that we all need to become comfortable with it. At some point, your kid will be going online without your supervision, so you should be assured that your kid is prepared for whatever he or she may encounter online. But before we ha start, let's have a quick poll. Now, it is, this, the sentence is, it is possible to make the internet 100% safe for children without sitting next to them the entire time they are online. Options are true, false. Now, before I proceed, you need to understand this webinar is a, the beginning of a discussion. While we will discuss internet safety today, I hope you will continue the discussion and keep the conversation going with your friends, with your family, with your neighbors, and with others. So now oh, we see a lot of answers coming in. Yeah, and uh, we'll be declaring the uh, answer soon. So. so Oh, I see. We we seeing a lot of uh, a lot of fifty fifty opinion coming in right now. Okay, so the answer is it is actually uh, you can actually make the internet hundred percent safe for children without sitting next to them, and we will discuss this. This webinar is going to take up exactly the pointers and how you can take care of your kids online. So let's first understand the ways in which kids access the internet. They do it through mobile devices uh, like uh, smartphones and tablets. You have uh, laptops and personal computers and also through video game consoles. Now with so many ways to get on the internet, it is harder than ever to monitor our kids' online activities. That is why it is so critical that we teach them how to use this technology safely and how to make smart decisions online. So what exactly do kids do online once they access the internet? The answer basically depends on their ages, but in general kids use the internet to play games with people who they may or may not know. Uh, they text or instant message one another, post profiles and interact with others on social networking sites, view and post videos, they download music, movies and more. They also upload a lot of art that they create. Uh, it could be music, it could be movies. Uh, they, and basically internet is also a good resource uh, to do research for your homework. So that's all the ways that they they use the internet. Now, let's also look 
at the concerns that arise when kids use the internet. Issues include uh, viewing inappropriate or disturbing content, cyberbullying, downloading viruses, spyware, or uh, coming across phishing or other online scams. Another concern is that of sexual predators. Before I proceed and we discuss each and every one of these troubles further, I have a quick question for you. So you just got on a computer and you can access the internet for the first time at home. So what is the most important factor to consider when trying to decide where to place the computer? First option, in the least used part of the house to get more out of the room. Second, the child's bedroom is the best so that they can have privacy. Third, it needs to be in a place where an adult can monitor the activity or next to the kitchen for easy access to snacks. So we have, uh, now you have to also keep in mind for what, what all we have covered. Now you have to understand that we are going to talk about all nine troubles and the issues that kids uh, can face and the ways in which they can access the internet. So when you answer this question, think. Think which could be the best option or which could be the right way to place a PC. So the, the actual, uh, the, we've got to, oh, that's, that's really amazing because uh, that's a very good response that we have received. About 96% of our uh, attendees think that a place, the PC should be placed where an adult can monitor the activity. Great. So um, it is actually the correct answer. Now moving on, let's start to understand what these online troubles are. Let's begin with inappropriate content. Now the very same feature that makes the internet such an amazing resource, that is its ability to give us instant access to vast amounts of news, information, opinions, can also expose our children to frightening and disturbing content. For example, kids who uh, misspell a website address or you know click on any uh, wrong link might come across adult images and text, hate speech or violent uh, content which may not be age appropriate. Cyberbullying is another great concern because uh, now what is cyberbullying? It usually implies uh, using the internet and other communications technologies such as a cell phone to tease, harass, threaten or intimidate another person. It can happen through online games, it can happen through social networking sites like Facebook, Twitter or uh, even through video sharing sites, virtually anywhere on the internet. It can also happen through cell phone text messaging. Now, uh, what exactly or what constitutes cyberbullying? How would you recognize what is cyberbullying and what is, you know, normal friendly behavior? Now, spreading rumors online or through text, posting hurtful or threatening messages on social networking sites, circulate, sexting uh, or circulating sexually suggested pictures or messages about a person, stealing a person's email information and using it uh, to send damaging messages posting unflattering pictures of the uh, person and spreading it, uh, pretending to be someone uh, else online who hurt that person. Now, one thing that we need to understand that cyberbullying is a very serious concern and it has grave impact on your emotional, psychological and even physical well-being. So whenever you come across a cyberbullying issue or you think that this is not right, please do not sit, report. Report to your local law authorities. Nowadays, every uh, law enforcement authority has a cybercrime cell. Please go and report or report to the website and take appropriate action. Malicious files or uh, now malicious files are usually part 
types of mal malware which refers to viruses, spyware and uh, these files that infect your computer. What they can do is track the sites you visit, steal your personal information, even use your computer to send spam or infect other computers. Now how does your computer get infected through uh, you know, viruses and spyware? Through um, downloads, uh, through uh, email attachments, peer-to-peer -peer networking or even through infected websites. The best defense against this kind of malware is uh, an antivirus software which is up to date. But a protection software, nowadays traditional soft protection software do not work or not effective because it's getting complex and sophisticated. So a multi-layered security often helps. But more than that, it is critical that you teach your child how to avoid content that might infect your computer. Now we come to sexual predators. Now who are these individuals? These individuals use the anonymity of the internet to portray themselves as children or even kindly adults. They trick the kids into revealing personal information, your children and teenagers into meeting them in person. So uh, it, is, it is also important that you understand or teach your child the difference between cute and creepy. Uh, a 50-year-old guy approaching a 16-year-old girl is not cute, it's creepy. So you need to understand how to recognize these sexual predators. Uh, fortunately, or, uh, the incidents reported are uh, not that common. Now we have covered the online uh, troubles or issues that kids might come across. Now moving on, uh, uh, let's uh, take another question. Should you tell your children that some personal information is okay to give out? Again, I repeat that it is important you understand uh, uh, the consequences of disclosing information. So we have the options of yes and no. I see a lot of answers coming in. A lot of people think that uh, part of it is it's okay to give out information and uh, that some of them think that it is not okay to give out that kind of information. Now uh, what does personal information actually include, you might ask. Now, your name, your address, your email addresses, any kind of confidential information like your date of birth, your mother's name, father's name, the school in which you, uh, the school that the, your kids attend or the college that they attend, giving or disclosing this kind of information is, is this kind of information actually is critical information. You should know where to divulge it and when not to talk, disclose it. So it is not okay to divulge any kind of information, personal information or confidential information unless and until, now unless and until you know that the site is a reputed site and is a safe site to enter your information in. So with all this, what can you as a parent do? to keep your kids safe. Now, what are the basics for protecting your uh, kids online? As a parent, you can model proper behavior for your kids. Now, kids often learn through examples, so set the right ones for them. Make sure your child knows uh, not to open an email from someone they don't know. They should hit delete instead. Never click on a pop-up ad and do not fall for supposed free offers or contests that require you to click on a link or any other button, download software or enter your personal information. We just discussed that. Stick to new sites that you know and you trust. What cyber criminals often do is they create fake websites about current events and popular figures in the news. Uh, so, you know, you'll be tricked into uh, the, go visiting that site and downloading malicious uh, software. Download programs only from reputable sites. 
it is also vital for you to uh, teach your child that uh, the you know they should not reveal personal information online such as their uh, name address phone number age and uh, they do should not post pictures of themselves or send them to anybody they don't know personally and that means any other than a close personal friend or a family member if your child has a social networking site you should check it frequently sometimes even uh, a very close friend might unintentionally post messages or photographs that with that might have some identifying information so make sure your child knows how to remove any kind of identifying postings also make sure that your child's online name isn't provocative or descriptive in any way now let them know also set some basic guidelines or rules uh, and please do not impose them on your kid rather start this would be a way of starting a conversation with your kid uh, so have some basic rules such as to when they are allowed to use the computer and where they are allowed to go on the internet tell them uh, that you want to know right away if anybody mistreats or insults them uh, because they should know from uh, wrong to right and good to bad so it's just common sense and um, uh, the best way to help your child stay safe online is to learn for yourself about the places that he or she will be visiting spend time on the sites play the games yourself become familiar with uh, such uh, virtual uh, so societies create your own social networking account so you will learn to restrict the people who can enter interact with your child and be sure, please do this, please, please, I repeat this, do read the privacy policy of each site before allowing your kid to create a profile or to use the program. Many sites also have safety tips and online tutorials. Additionally, you can use parental control. Now, coming to parental controls, what are, uh, there are basically three types of parental control. One is uh, hardware based, the other one is traditional or software uh, parental control and mobile uh, parental controls. Hardware based parental control usually helps uh, in applying web content filtering and internet time scheduling uh, to all the uh, internet, uh, all the devices in the household that are connected to the internet. Uh, however, it becomes a little ineffective where uh, per user configuration or policy setting or you know setting rules in how to use the internet when to use the internet what web websites to visit when it comes down to such basic rules then hardware based protection isn't that effective because say for example you have a 10 year old and you have a 14 year old so there are certain websites that you would not want the 10 year old kid to visit so in that sense uh, hardware based protection uh, becomes a, the configuration becomes uh, a little difficult and it does not provide as much detailed monitoring as a software solution can so coming to a software or a traditional parental control now it's a simple utility that prevents access to inappropriate websites parents can also decide which uh, websites are inappropriate it allows to limit the amount of spend, time spent online and also check uh, you know, set a schedule uh, for uh, on which day the internet uh, use is permitted or both. Um, and good parental control software should also be foolproof against hacking. By that we mean that kids are smart, they're really internet savvy. So they know how to get around uh, the ways to, you know, manipulate control or deactivate uh, the software. So a good parental control it should be hack proof they should not be able to deactivate it uh, as that that easy so how does traditional parental control help it restricts your child from unknowingly installing malicious or harmful softwares and sometimes even firmware prevents non non age appropriate material unwanted advertisements and dangerous links restricts your child from accessing your valuable data and disabling security softwares like antivirus. So,
parental control is uh, one of the most powerful features of uh, quickly desktop and mobile products. And this feature allows a lot of user-based restrictions, website and uh, category-based restrictions. Uh, it also allows you to uh, schedule access. Like for example, you can see, uh, you can uh, select whom to apply the settings. Here we have selected apply to all users. You can also restrict access to particular categories or websites. This is very interesting. We have about uh, 38 to 40 categories of websites that you can restrict. And you can select the category, uh, restrict access to a particular website within that category. Maybe you want to enable that category, but you want to restrict a particular website from that category. You can add it to the block list and schedule internet access. Now here you can see you can add the you can add the list of websites to be blocked, or you could block a subdomain, and also schedule internet access for your kids. Now let's take, uh, um, now the other type of control is, uh, take a look at the, you know, let's take a look at the mobile parental control. Now these apps can give the parents a higher level of monitoring uh, than provided by, you know, at a router level. So geolocation based apps can also alert uh, parents when the child uh, leaves the designated safety zones. Uh, some of apps nowadays uh, also have the ability to block texting while driving. Now, so to sum it all up, uh, parental control is a very effective way to control what your kid, kid sees online or what they, the amount of time that they spend online. Um, so now before we summarize everything or we come across the main points of uh, whatever we have discussed and we give out some more additional information, let's take a quick poll. So if your child is using the internet on their own, should you ask them questions about what they have been doing? Options are no, that sort of information is personal. Second, no, your child will tell you if it is important. Third, yes, internet needs to be used in small portions only. And fourth, yes, it helps facilitate communication and issue resolution. So I see a lot of I see a lot of people in a dilemma as to whether they should be answering the first one or second one. In fact, I have I have faced this in my workshops as well, where when I ask them this question, people are like, "Okay, uh, but our kid would never reveal this to us, or they wouldn't say something even if we ask." So, well, your opinion actually. Uh, some of them, you know, it is not entirely incorrect, but then always as a parent or a guardian, you need to make an effort. So uh, basically, uh, it is important that um, as a parent, you start a conversation with your child, and it is important um, to understand their online activities, the kind of technologies that they are using. So now uh, let's have a look at the poll results. So that's great. 50% have actually said that yes, it helps facilitate communication and issue resolution. And this is the right answer. So now as a parent, what should be the basic rules that you should have for using the internet and what should be, uh, how should you react or what should you do? Understand that it's your influence. So have the PC kept in a living room, set some ground rules, what sites they can visit, who they can talk to and how much time they can spend online. Research before you buy, understand what technology you are bringing in, don't just sit there as I said, report if you do not find anything to be okay. Now talk to your kids, they are not as mysterious, get involved, get to know, challenge them to a duel. If you respect what they do, they will respect your rules. Please do not take the internet access away from them because they will retaliate and does not solve the problem. 
supervise your internet use. See if you can uh, if you can see what your kids are doing, they are less likely to get into trouble. Most importantly, please understand that having parental controls installed does not equate to having safe kids. Technology cannot replace your time and attention. So the other thing is don't go overboard even if you have a social networking account which is joined to that of your kid. Do not post embarrassing pictures or messages. Uh, and decide on what kind of controls to enable. Have a mix of uh, all sorts of parental controls to uh, maintain your kids' uh, safety online. So most of the quick new products have actually a lot of, uh, have inbuilt parental control in them. And uh, here are some of the products that uh, of QuickView that have parental control as a feature. And uh, they are easily, readily available everywhere. Now, um, you can get it from the, if you are interested, you can get it from any your local dealers or you can also get it uh, uh, online. Or you can always give us a call and we would be glad to assist. Uh, with that, I would uh, thank you again for attending this webinar and uh, please uh, send in your questions, your suggestions to corporate communications at quickview.com. Thank you and have a great day. Thank you so much Samya for uh, so much information. Uh, I, I know this session was very interactive and there is a lot that I have learned today from uh, Soumya about parental control and how can I keep my children, my kids safe online. As Soumya has uh, informed earlier, in case you have any questions, you can write to us at corporate communications at quickheal.co.in. You can also visit us on Facebook and Twitter. The Twitter handle for quickheal is twitter.com slash quickheal. We now conclude the webinar. Post this webinar, there is, an, uh, there is a survey for you where we would like to know your feedback about this webinar. Thank you very much and you have a wonderful day ahead.